Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us again. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis 19. We are going to continue, kind of wrap up a discussion we began last time on on the uh, destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But today, what I want us to see is the grace of God in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19. We see the grace of God covering not just Lot, but even Lot's sons in law, even his extended family, grace is made available to them if they will accept it. Um, it's really important for us. I think it's really valuable for us to remember whenever we experience the, God's, the grace of God, um, avoid the danger. Avoid the thought that, you know, God has given me grace because I'm such a good person because he must have really important things for me. Um, God may have important things for you, and you certainly are special and precious to him. But God saves us by his grace because he's good and gracious, not because in any way we deserve it. Jude chapter 1, there's only one chapter in Jude, 20, verses 22 and 23 says, Have mercy on those who waver. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Here's the challenge with the angels and Lot. The angels have to snatch them as though from fire. Because Lot and his family are minimizing the danger because they don't understand the impending doom for them, the angels literally have to grab their hands and take them out to save them from the fire. When was the last time you had to snatch somebody from the fire? Can you think of a time when you recognize somebody in spiritual danger, relational danger, emotional danger, and you love them enough to snatch them from the fire. Here's the thing. If you can't think of a single person that you've ever had to snatch from the fire, do you really think that God has put nobody in your life? I mean, maybe you're 13 years old and you've never, you're an adult. You really think God, there's been nobody in your life? that you've had to make this application with? I'm not saying that it happens every day. I'm not saying it happens every month. But there's a reason that Jude, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says there are some people that you deal with gently because they waver, but there are some people you deal with because if you don't snatch them from the fire, there's a destruction coming. And again, I think the challenge is for us to realize, to, rec to care enough for people and to recognize, hey, this person... Everybody doesn't, doesn't need to be snatched from the pot fire. But you'd think once every 30 years, once every 10 years, there's probably one person who's headed for destruction. They're in a bad relationship. They really shouldn't be dating that person. They really shouldn't be hanging around those kids and making them friends. You know, they really shouldn't make that move, take that job, whatever because of the evil that it leads to. And you do your best hmm, to snatch them from the fire. Now, f sometimes I've had it in my own life when people haven't listened at the time, but they've expressed appreciation later on. There have been other times that, um, that I've challenged people because it was clear to me they needed the questions I, uh, do you do you really want to live this way? Do you really think this is God's will for you? Um, do you do you really want to completely surrender your life to Jesus Christ? And they haven't appreciated the challenge, and they've moved on, and that's sad, and I regret that deeply. And and so we don't do it all the time, but we got to take that seriously. It's not just in the Bible for words. But we see God's grace to Lot and his family because he snatches them from the fire when they hesitate. Verse 17. As soon as the angels got them outside, one of them said, Run for your lives. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run to the mountains or you'll be swept away. Now, if you are in Lot's family, how seriously do you take, Okay, I'll run away. But if I look back, I mean, really, is God going to, Punish me if I just look back? Lot said to them, no, my lords, please. Your servant has 
indeed found favor with you and you've shown great kindness by saving my life. I can't run to the mountains. Now, ironically, Lot will run to the mountains almost as soon as he gets to this place that he's negotiated to stay at. This is not a friendly place for him, but he wants this place. Uh, I can't go to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me and I will die. <laughs> Always be aware of people who say the only choice is this choice or death. You know, this not good choice or death, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got to completely change our lives or else there's going to be death. You know, the climate is going to collapse. That's what the communists do. This is that's what Marxists do. You know, if you, uh, we know you don't want high taxes. We don't. We know you don't want the government to control things. But if you don't, it's going to be death. You know, kind of always. That's that's why. If I do this, I'll die. I can't do this. You know, really. Look. This town is close enough for me to flee to. It's a small place. Please let me run to it. It's only a small place, isn't it? So I, so that I can survive. There's this theme in the Bible. There's this kind of this theme, actually, even sociologically, that um, the more, uh, the larger a, a city gets, the more wicked it becomes. It's like there's wickedness associated with cities and um and, 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 and more godliness, I guess, associated with the country. I'm not sure why that is, but I think that's part of the argument. Uh, it's a, I'll go to this small town. It's not like a bad place like the, like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, all right, I grant your request about this matter too, and I will not demolish the town that you mentioned. Hurry up, run to it, for I can't do anything until you get there. And therefore, the name of the city was Zoar, or small town, insignificant place. But again, notice the grace of God. He says, I can't do anything until you get there. The grace of God. God is withholding. God is sovereign over all. He can do whatever he wants, but by his grace, he has covenanted himself with Abraham to not destroy Lot and his family. Again, you read scripture and you kind of get used to God making covenants with people. But if we had never read scripture in the first time, we understood the God of all eternity, the God who has all power, the God who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the God who is so great, he is unknowable, his power is unsearchable, his knowledge is beyond our eternal ability to know his, his, the, his mind. That God is humbling everyone. Superiors don't covenant themselves with inferiors. They tell inferiors what to do. It's equals who make covenants with each other. God humbles himself and makes a covenant with Abraham, makes a promise to Abraham, the grace of God that he actually would promise us, I'll forgive your sins. Surrender to Jesus Christ. We see God's grace here. The sun had risen when the sun had risen over the land when Lot reached Zoar. Then out of the sky, the Lord rained Sodom on Sodom and Gomorrah, burning sulfur from the Lord. Now, this could be a volcano, something. I, I, it's easiest to me. It's just a, a simple reading of the passage. It seems that God miraculously is sending this raining of sulfur from heaven itself. They rain down burning sulfur from the Lord out of the sky. As he demolished these cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities and whatever grew up on the ground, total annihilation. I think it's kind of interesting that uh, you know, ever since then, they have tried to find Sodom and Gomorrah. And there are a couple of there are some people who think they have found it in a couple of different places. But the fact that all these years later, there's no trace of it. I mean, it's really hard to find. At best, hard to find where it is. It tells you the completeness of this destruction. But Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. It's just a look. But the language here implies it was more than just a glancing curiosity look. It was a a look of longing, a look of, 
I wish I could go back. You know, the Bible says that to repent is to turn our minds from the mind of the past, the mind of the flesh, to the mind of Christ, to follow him. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, forgetting what is behind, I press on. Many have pointed out that God gave us two eyes, and they're both in the front of our heads, no eyes for the back. We are made to look forward. Is there any way in your life right now where you find yourself looking back? Maybe it's looking back and you're holding on to regrets. Maybe you're looking back and holding on to hurts. Maybe you're looking back and holding on to sin. And, and there's a part of you that kind of misses that. God says, don't look back. and look. You look forward. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 12. And God remembered Abraham, verse 27. Early in the morning, Abraham went to the place where he stood before God. In the previous chapter, this is where God and Abraham, God was able to, Abraham was able to talk to God. And God listened. And this is where God agreed with Abraham. I won't destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. And he looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain. Abraham obviously is on a high on a mountain side. It's not hard to imagine this if you've, if you've been there, the, the hills there of uh, the Galilean desert are high. You can see for miles and miles over the valley there with uh, the Jordan and the Dead Sea. But lots, uh, um, he looked down over Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, and he saw the smoke that was going up from the land like the smoke of a furnace. And so it was when God destroyed the city of the plains, he remembered... Lot? No. He remembered Abraham and brought Lot out of the middle of the upheaval when he demolished the cities where Lot had lived. The grace of God. The grace of God. When God saw Lot, he didn't see Lot. He saw Abraham. When God saved Lot, it wasn't because of Lot and Lot's family. It was because of Abraham standing up for him in his place when he could not stand for himself. And so in this way, we see the ultimate grace of God through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that we are righteous because we wear the clothes of Christ. We wear the righteousness of Christ. When we give our lives to Christ and we are baptized into him, he takes our old clothes of unrighteousness and we put on Christ. He becomes our identity. We walk in his righteousness. So how God sees us today, and one day when you stand before God in eternity, if you are in Christ, I love this picture that God will see you, but he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus Christ. God looked at the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and he remembered Abraham. God looks at you and he remembers Jesus. And so our confidence is not in ourselves or in our righteousness, but in Christ himself. Where do you see evidence of God's grace in your life today? All around us, every day, every week, we have reason to be thankful because God is always showing his grace, even in the most difficult times. He puts people in our lives. He gives us second chances. He grabs us by the hand. He leads us like a shepherd. And so the psalmist would say, if the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, the Lord had not been on our side when the people attacked us, we would have been they would have swallowed us alive. If the Lord had not been on our side when Satan is attacking us, when Satan wants to destroy us, we would have been swallowed alive. But thanks be to God for his grace through Jesus Christ that we live today. I hope you see his grace all around you today. 
Heavenly Father, uh, we certainly live in dangerous times. We certainly need to and want to walk in your grace. Help us to see your grace all around. I'm not sure if Lot and his family, I doubt that his daughters appreciated what would have happened to them if not for grace. God, maybe we walk as people who are grateful, who think of you often, who are thankful for you every day in all the little ways. And help us to help us to be your people of grace, leading people out of destruction of this day. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you soon.